Hey robot fans, welcome back to the channel. What you are looking at is the first spin test of my Grand Inquisitor Saber, the coolest lightsaber in all the Star Wars galaxy. This first prototype took a lot of experimentation and a lot of iterations over the past couple months, and even though watching it spin for the first time is super cool and rewarding, this is just the beginning, so let's get started. Alright, so this is great. What we have here is a very basic version of the Grand Inquisitor Saber from Star Wars Rebels. At this point, it's a pretty dumb version of the Saber in that there's no microcontroller or Arduino running, there's no code, there's not even any user input at this point, but what we do have is a good example of all the core mechanics working together. These gears are rolling the way they're supposed to, the blades are spinning the way they're supposed to, all the key mechanical components are in their right places, and everything is set up to move forward and make this into a smart version of the Sabre that's going to have custom circuit boards and code running and safety features, battery charging, user input, and all of that stuff jammed into this small little package here. But all of that starts with getting these core components correct. So that's what this video is going to focus on. We're going to go right back to the beginning, start with the Lazy Susan bearing, which is the start of it all, and build this back up to this point. The Lazy Susan is a Rockler type bearing, and this is what's going to give us our rotation. I modified this a bit by drilling all of these holes. To do that, I took all the ball bearings out and then I made some 3D printed drill guides which I used to drill and tap various sized mounting holes all around the inner and outer Susans. And I also re-greased all of the bearings to make it nice and smooth, it spins really fast, much better than it does right out of the box. The motor for this project is going to be this 1621 RPM heavy duty planetary gear motor from Servo City. This is a pretty beefy motor, probably beefier than we need, but I'm kind of locked in with the size of this Lazy Susan, and I saw when I built it out in my 3D program that the motor fit and the batteries fit, so I figured I'd rather have that power and not need it than need it and not have it. So we're gonna go with this motor, and the trickiest part here is with the motor sitting inside of the Lazy Susan, inside the hilt, we need to transfer the rotation of the motor to 90 degrees so that it can rotate this. And to do that, we are going to use some bevel gears. I've done some previous iterations of the Sabre using a two to one bevel gear ratio. So this would be on the motor and then it would spin this and obviously this has twice as many teeth. So it would cut the RPMs down in half. So this is a 1621 RPM motor. This two to one ratio would cut that down to about 800 RPM and in my previous iterations, the gearing going around here was an eight to one ratio. So all of a sudden that 1600 RPMs goes down to 100. And the motor isn't, the whole saber isn't spinning quite as fast as I would like. There's plenty of torque and it was, uh, it was very torquey, but it wasn't spinning as fast as I thought it could. And I think the fast spin is what's going to make this project super cool. So I did a little digging and I found a one to one miter gear set which I'm gonna use on this iteration. I also 3D printed a plastic gear to put on there. And this one-to-one -one gear is going to transfer the 1621 RPMs directly to the eight-to-one gear ratio going around the Lazy Susan. And that'll leave us with about 200 RPMs with no load for the Saber. And that's going to be really, really, really fast. We've gone from not quite fast enough to maybe a little too fast, but I think, I think that's okay. And here is that gearing rigged up for the Lazy Susan. We have the one-to-one -one bevel gear in there, and that is attached to a plastic 3D printed gear. I have it all rigged up with some aluminum, some other 3D printed parts, and some super high-tech Velcro. That's all temporary, so that's not really important. The real important bit is this gear, which is kind of overlapping the Lazy Susan a bit, and now we can add a larger gear going to the outer Susan, which will give us our rotation. Unfortunately, my 3D printers are too small to print the outer gear in one piece, and I didn't want poor assembly of several pieces of a gear to hinder the test, so I'm using my spanking new X-Carve to carve a wooden gear out of some plywood. Okay, I've got this all rigged up onto the Lazy Susan, so if we turn it on, you can see we get our rotation. So this is great, because this kind of gets me back to a point that I had been with previous iterations, only now we have the correct gearing on there and we're in a better position to move forward. Um, you may be looking at this and thinking to yourself, wow, that's not spinning really, really fast like you said it was going to be. And that is because we are currently only running four and a half volts into this motor, which is a 12 volt motor. 
So you can see if we start turning up the voltage. So this is where 12 volts puts us. Now, I'm not saying I'm scared of this thing, but uh, and yeah, let's see if we can take this one step further. And the way we're going to do that is by adding in one of the more successful parts of my previous iteration, the blades. These are super bright NeoPixel blades, and this is the actual weight that's going to be on the outer saber, so there's no better way to test it than to rig these guys up. And that kind of gets us right back to where we started at the beginning of this video with our first real blade spin test. All right, we're ready to run our first test with the, uh, with the big gear attached to the outer Susan and the blades attached. Um, I did some preliminary tests off camera and this thing has a little bit of a kick to it. So we're gonna start pretty low. We're gonna start around three volts and we're gonna slowly work our way up. So if we kick on the three volts, Yeah, you can see this is uh, it's cool, but it could be a lot cooler, right? <laughs> so as we ramp up the voltage, so this is about five volts. I'm noticing that if I don't keep it totally steady, if I lean my, if I roll my hand forward or backwards a little bit, the whole thing starts to wobble really, really intensely. So if we turn it up just a little bit more. Oh, I turned it down. We turned it up more. Okay, now we're getting into a speed that this is kind of what I was hoping for originally. And this speed is happening at eight and a half volts. So this is kind of like my ideal speed, but it's nice to know that we still have four more volts that we can go up to. What's cool is I can hear the blades going past me. I can hear them like a fan going whoosh, 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 whoosh. It kicks a lot as you turn the speed up. So if we go up to its final destination here at about 12 volts. Wow, it's like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's really fast. This is probably faster than I'll ever get it for real. But it's nice to know that we can go this high. It feels kind of stable. It feels secure. It's not quite as scary as I thought it was going to be. That being said, it's still pretty fast. So let's bring it back down. Okay, safe manageable speed here. And I'm gonna kick this off. Whew. This thing's gonna get heavier and it's already kind of <laughs> hard to hold it in that one position for so long. I'm also kind of bound up by wires here, but it's a pretty cool little thing. Okay, so my original plan was to end the video with that test, but feeling that kick from the motor when I was turning it on, it's starting to get me to really wonder how much of a kick there's gonna be when this thing has a lot more weight on it. So I wanted to do one more test with a little weight around the outside of the saber. And since these, are, these blades are already wired up here and here, I figured I might as well do the test that we all really want. I made a little, <laughs> a little bit of a brain here this is just enough, just enough battery power and just enough computing power to run these sabers for about five minutes before the batteries die. So we can put that here and then I have a matching counterweight at the bottom. These two weigh the exact same thing. I'm realizing how much of a wobble can build up inside of the saber. So having this weight perfectly balanced will be good. And this is going to add about, about 12 ounces to this whole thing. So I, I should hopefully get a bit of an idea of how much the kick is going to be increasing with the weight and that's going to lead me into deciding how to speed control this thing etc etc but for now what we're really going to get out of all of this is a cool test with the blades on
So this is awesome. Getting to this point after working on this project for so long is really satisfying. The end goal of this project is to have a fully functional, fully contained spinning lightsaber with lights, sounds, everything, and no external wires. Everything built right into the hilt. So be sure to check back or subscribe to get notified of the next video where we're going to start building the actual circuits that's going to make this thing possible. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.